I, I think you can go back to the 1980s. I remember Maradona, he used to put his arms behind his back, didn't he, and shove officials with his chest. You know, this sort of thing has been going on, on for years in football. And I think referees can be guilty of trying to manage the game. You know, they're always getting told off, get you know, you know your cards happy and, yeah. you know, you're not letting the game flow. And I think if they start doing that, they, you know, they just get more stiff. But what we said on Twitter, which I agree with you with, there's just no boundary. There's no physical boundary, you know, technical physical boundary to say, look, you're in my space, stay away. And if we have this sort of, you know, imaginary boundary drawn, I just think people will know where, where it stands. And I just think it'll make the game you know, more understanding with regards to what you can and can't do with a, with a match official. I think what Mark said then, I, I don't agree with Mark, a lot of respect for Mark, but I don't think this is in the realms of what uh, Mitovic did. I understand that, you know, match officials will be accountable and, and get the same punishments that they do a like for like incident, but, you know, he was responding to someone grabbing him, whereas Mitovic was the one who was grabbing the referee and continuing the aggression. So I, I'm, I'm not buying that, you know, it's in those fields. And I think, when people realise that, you know, just don't put your hands on a match official and you won't end up with situations like this. Do, do, do you look at the rugby and say, you know, the, the officials there are very much, you can't really, or you get banned or you get sim bins or, or whatever it is. Do you think they should be bought in? Because... Yeah, 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 absolutely. We, we've got them at, at grassroots uh, level. They, they've been about for a while and mm. I think uh, they've been a really good tool in, in the box of the referee sim bins. And I think... You know, the FA said it's only at grassroots level and they've done the same with the body cam trial, which is brilliant, it's only at grassroots level. But what are they doing at the top level to, to you know, to prevent this behaviour happening? And and currently, they don't seem to be doing anything and we're just getting concerned that, you know, let's let's set some boundaries here. Let's just, you know, let's just think about it and, and understand that, you know, you shouldn't be laying hands on match officials. You just, no. I just can't think any reason other than a handshake that we should be doing that. Yeah. Do do the teams and and do the managers need to go away um over the summer break and and sit their players down and say you've got to start behaving here you've got to show a little bit more respect because if the punishment for the next season comes in and and it's harsher or or at least they say what they can do with their cards and they actually mm. they actually use them more readily and you say look this is actually going to be um the 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 level that you are punished is going to be a lot higher for what you're used to. Do the, do the clubs have a kind of um, duty of care to say, right, you guys need to start behaving better? I think we all have, Laura. I think players got a duty of care and I think referees need to be stronger. You know, we all want a game where, you know, there isn't many cards and we all like a referee to have a personality and use that personality to manage the game. But we can't manage or negotiate law. And I think we've gone into this field where we're negotiating with players what we should and should and should and should not do. And I just think you never hear the PFA come out and say that's out of order. You never hear the LMA come out and say it's out of order. The PGMOL responded really, I think they responded at half time, didn't they, with statements. But we still don't hear nothing from the other stakeholders in football. You know, let's all try and make the game better together and, and just create these sort of respectable areas where, you know, Look, this, look, look at what happened to Sean Massey, a slight touch on the shoulder. Then we've evolved to what's happened to where uh, Bruno Fernandez should have been addressed and it wasn't. Then we have Mitovic. Now we have this, you know, where are we going to stand up and say, look, come on, let's together, let's do something to just make it a less aggressive and more enjoyable game. And you feel like that two metre exclusion zone, that's going to be the thing that, that actually is a step forward for protecting referees and officials? Yeah, I think I think it'll be a positive step forward just to everyone to have their own personal space and just understand that, you know, just don't do it. I just don't I think we don't want to be, you know, sterilize the game. We we want management, we want we want communication, we want positivity. But there's there's just no boundaries. It's like a free for all. You can just basically do what you want. And look, we had that Mexican referee who actually needs Needs mm -hmm. a player, isn't he, between the legs? And so it, it's all these little things are uh, growing in the game, contact with match officials both ways. Let's not just let it continue the way it always has been. Let's try and do something positive that allows space between a player and a match official. Do you think that, we, that I know we've kind of gone back on ourselves a little bit when we're talking about um, players and sorry, match officials being accused of being um, card happy. Do you think that's why they haven't done it in the past? Is it as simple as that? They're worried about the criticism. Yeah, I think it is. I think that that's fair. It, even as you come through the, through the uh, the ranks as a referee, you may or what not know, but clubs mark referees. And a lot of them will say, oh, we sent our player off and he shouldn't, or he carded too many. You never let the game flow. It's all consequential. So they get sort of conditioned as they go up, you know, where they're, they're doing technical cautions and they're not doing cautions like this. And I think I think that we all just look at it and reflect and just think, what can we all do better? And I just think we all want the game to be managed. 
but we also want the game to be controlled in a manner where no one's going to be laying hands on a match official. Do you think it goes back to grassroots football again? I mean, I, I, I've been to games where, you know, 10-year-olds are playing and the mums and dads are shouting yeah. and the referee and, you know, and, and the players coming forward. Entitlement. But, you know, it's, it's one of them situations Very where true. it's got to start probably when the kids are 10 years old where you respect the referee and that goes in your your future, you know, uh, career going forward, whatever standard you play at. No, I agree, I agree. I think it's both. I think it's top down and bottom up. You know, just like the copy of an Aldo <laughs> goal celebration for a Peter Crouch goal celebration, people mimic what they see on TV. So they're going to mimic this behaviour. But equally, we need to understand that, you know, these children are watching this behaviour on, on the sidelines by parents like I think it was you, Carl, and just said the entitled behaviour, they all seem to think they're entitled. And when these young referees are starting off at 14 and 15, mm. you know, they're getting this sort of stick. Even even this morning, I'm getting phone calls and messages from people who's been assaulted and grabbed and, and verbally abused at youth level. I, I had it about 45 minutes before I come on, come on here, dealing with people who's approached us, you know, in confidence to... to reach out for help because these sort of things are happening to them on their own with no cameras, with no stewards, with no police officers. So but there's a, there's a much bigger piece here than just mm. someone's grabbed an assistant's arm and he, and he's, he's, you know, he's sort of threw him off and it looks, in my opinion, that we haven't got any clear footage of this. It does look like he's shaking him off. Yeah. But, you know, I know Constantine would be absolutely gutted over this. You know, we're talking about a FIFA system every year, put mm. a lot of years in to get it and he wouldn't do that. In an aggressive manner, I I, no. I could definitely state that, and I just think absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah I just think, yeah, you know, yeah, it doesn't look good, but let, let's get a clear view of everything. And and I and I don't agree. He's been taken off fixtures. It sends the, the wrong message because nothing's been proven. And I just think, just let's reflect. Let's just all take accountability of how we behave towards mass officials. Mm. And yet, mass officials at grassroots level, you know, some of them might do things that untowards. Look what Darren Deadman did. Again, judge in that in that um, if, if switch games where he, he put his head into someone, a lot of people in football come out and said, I don't blame him for doing how he reacted. So we know the sympathy there and real understanding within the game from people like yourselves who want to make the game better. And I just think something like an exclusion zone, whether that's a meter, two meter, whatever, just some boundary that, you know, that's too far, stay away from me. I, th I think that'd be good for the game. Martin, it's a real pleasure having you on. Thank you very much. Uh, Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. See Take you care. later. Uh, Martin Bye -bye. Cassidy there, CEO of Ref Support UK. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.